might have just picked up one of these, a GoPro Hero 11 Black, and you're wanting to turn those crappy, shaky home movies into something that's cinematic, something that you can post on your Instagram and YouTube and your friends comment on like, wow, John, this is actually really good. How come you didn't feel more of me? To which you reply, or you think to yourself, well, I kind of did, but you didn't want a bar of it. Today, in this video, we're gonna be breaking down that opening sequence shot by shot running through all the juicy Protune settings, how to set your camera up for success, and to create GoPro cinematic. And guess what? He got me up at 6 a.m. this morning for sunrise, because cinematics means good light, so sunrise, sunset, golden, we got it. You're gonna, You're blessed. Have, you're gonna have to get out of bed. Yep. So when it comes to creating cinematography or cinematic visuals, rather than taking our word for it, how about we get an insight into an established cinematographer, someone like Linus Sungreen, the cinematographer who worked on the latest installment of one of our favorite movies of 2022, James Bond, No Time to Die. So really the opener of any cinematic sequence is an establishing shot. And it's important to look out for moments and environments on your trip that could lend themselves to this. In the Bond example, Linus then cuts to a reaction shot and introduces us to the protagonist. This is a much tighter shot, which allows us to rest on the character for a moment and explore his determined mindset. From here, we then cut to another wide, however, threading these shots from inside to outside the vehicle, whilst also getting an alarming sense of movement through the camera's motion blur. And the final shot is the same car leaving the location. It's slightly tighter than the previous shot, so the sequence flows from wide to tight to slightly less wide to slightly less tight. Setting up our very first establishing shot like we saw in the James Bond trailer. Now we've got this amazing, bursting, vibrant sunrise. So we want to try and capture that. Now, the way that I want to set up my camera is I'm going to set this up shooting in, let's go with 5.3K, shooting 25 frames a second. We're going to use our 10-bit color profile. We're going to make sure that our bit rate's notched up to high, and we're just going to slowly push the camera in towards the scene. We just want to create an establishing shot of the environment so that our audience can rest on this space and be like, ooh, what's going to happen there? The other thing is 25 frames a second is perfect for this sort of lower light environment. But if I want to add a little bit of, you know, if I want this to be slow-mo in my shot, I'm also going to try this shot in 50 frames a second so I can slow it down in post. And I'm also going to like go with that really nice wide GoPro look just to give me some, you know, some variety in my shot. Maybe it looks better, you know, I've got to make sure that I've got options here. I want to see that light punching through. So this looks like a really nice frame. Rule the thirds, lighthouse is on the third, slowly punching in. Oh, the light's freaking good. All right, so now that we've got our landscape establishing shot in the bag, we're going to move to introducing our subject. And to do that, we're essentially going to be pulling out from a subject, starting at their feet, and then slowly revealing their face for the element of surprise, bit of mystery in there. In terms of settings, we are gonna choose 25 frames per second, 5.3K. The reason I choose 25 is because I don't think I'm gonna slow down that shot. It's not gonna be a slow-mo. We're gonna do play at full speed, so I'm just going with that because there's not that much light. It's still sort of sunrise at the moment. What's important here is that we're gonna choose the digital lens linear. And the reason is we're really trying to punch in that subject and have them be the focus of the shot, right? To have no distraction with the landscape around because we've already introduced our landscape with the establishing shot. It's also really important that as you're going through the process of filming that you do review your shots. Just make sure that you're happy with the camera movement, you know? And each time you could imp slightly improve on the previous take. That might be in terms of getting more fluidity in the movement of the camera, or it's just getting the framing and the composition looking a little bit better. Shot number three, we're gonna incorporate motion blur. Now, a lot of people may ask like, do you need ND filters? Yes, you could use ND filters, but the point here is we're gonna select 25 frames a second and we're gonna move the camera fairly quickly, which will create the motion blur in the shot. Now, it's important to remember that if you're shooting in the high frame rates, 50, 100, you're not able to get the same lifelike motion within your images. So 25 frames a second, we're still using our 10-bit color profile. We are still gonna be shooting in flat all of these shots because we want them to all look and color grade the same in our final edit. And essentially what we're gonna do now is the protagonist is gonna be running and we're gonna be chasing them. It's a tracking shot 
camera is going to be moving low to the ground and we're going to be moving in the same direction as our protagonist. All right, when it comes to shooting cinematic, it's not just about settings. And settings are important and I'm going to get into the setting of these scenes in just a second. But story also matters here. So we've scripted this little story and we have to reveal our second protagonist. And in order to do so, we're going to go back to the field of view of linear, because once again, we're focusing on a single character as opposed to an entire scene. We're also going to choose to shoot in a hundred frames. And the reason is we want to slow down the footage so that the viewer can take time to integrate the information that, oh wait, this is a new protagonist. There is a story here. In terms of motion, we're gonna switch things around here. So earlier, Jake was chasing me as I was running away from the camera. And so now for this shot, we're gonna have the reverse. Essentially, I'm gonna be running backwards and Jake is gonna be coming towards the camera. That way we're totally flipping the angle of the scene and just keeping people on their toes. This next shot, we really wanna highlight the camera's movement. So we're coming back to our protagonist and what we're gonna do here is we're gonna circle around them. We're using a super light tool. Uh, we don't have a big rig. We don't have something strapped to our back. So we can be really experimental with our shots. And I think this is really important to incorporate in your cinematography, camera motion. What we wanna try and do here is we wanna get that nice harmonious movement of the camera from left to right. We're gonna circle and see which part of that circling frame really looks the nicest with the light and the subject and the camera. If you've been enjoying this video and you wanna keep learning, then make sure you check out the video in the cards here that teaches you how to put all these shots into a sequence in a free editing tool on your computer. And if you really are enjoying this video and wanna share some love, then punch that thumbs up, thanks. So one of the coolest reasons as to why I shoot in 5K or even 4K on the brand new GoPro Hero 11 is because I love to use these high-res video files to also create high-res GoPro screen grabs and essentially pretty high quality GoPro photos and edit those photos using the sponsor of today's video, which is the amazing team at Skylum and their software, Luminar Neo. Luminar Neo harnesses the power of artificial intelligence to enhance your images with ease. And I think it's one of the easiest ways to improve your GoPro photo editing. The AI powered enhancements intelligently analyze your photos, automatically correct exposure, color, and composition, giving you stunning results in seconds. Check out this GoPro screen grab I captured from our shoot earlier this morning. I just popped it into Luminar Neo, added a really quick sky replacement, toggled a few of the faders and sliders, and voila, that created the thumbnail that you clicked on for this video. One of the other reasons I absolutely love Luminar Neo is because it has such an impressive range of photo presets to easily kickstart any photo edit. Luminar Neo is the ultimate photo editing tool for photography photographers and visual artists looking to elevate their work. With its powerful AI enhancements, intuitive interface, and a range of creative features, Luminar Neo unlocks limitless possibilities for your artistic expression. Click that top link of the description to start your free trial now. All right, first things first, we are going to set up a time-lapse, get that rolling straight away so we can incorporate that into our scene. When we're shooting time-lapses, I think it's super important to shoot in 5.3K. Now, the reason for this is because whenever you're getting some nice time lapse some nice motion in your image especially when the image is still you want to be able to add that ken burns crop to like move the image in if you do that in like 2.7k or 1080 you don't have as many pixels in the frame so that's why we opt for 5.3k because we can really play around with with the pixels in that image so selecting the highest resolution there i'm also going to shoot in wide when selecting the format for a time lapse i choose uh, video format because i don't want to you know have to process this in post the interval i'm gonna go for five seconds that's because you know the sun isn't moving super quickly if you select two seconds i think that can often look a little bit jittery so i tend to go for the five seconds but if something's moving quick and you don't have a lot of time then go for two seconds once we've got that all stoked we're all dialed in there let's get this time lapse rolling that sun's literally about to pop so i'm gonna find a nice spot probably somewhere where the composition is good. I can see that lighthouse. Just want to be able to get a clean shot on the lighthouse in the middle of the frame. There it is. Let's go. All right, we're rolling. Sick. All right. I'm having a little David Attenborough moment here. 
So now we're entering to the final section of the sequence and we're introducing a shot that's really important. That's where our two protagonists meet and it's sort of like the climax of the very short story that we've crafted. And so to do that, we've decided to go with a locked off shot. And the reason is we already have a lot of movement in that edit. And at this point, you want your viewer to be focusing on the scene and what's actually happening and motion can be quite distracting. So we're choosing a locked off shot, tripod shot. We don't have a tripod, so we're literally sticking the grande in the sand. <laughs> you know, DIY, that's part of filmmaking. When it comes to setting, we're gonna choose super view because we're gonna have two characters in the frame and I wanna have it as wide as possible so I have a breath of air as well because I can't review the shot because we're both gonna be in it. Now, it wouldn't be a GoPro shoot without incorporating some form of POV, point of view. Now, the setup that we always use is this El Grande selfie stick with the bite mount because it's just the perfect setup for versatility. Now, with this shot, we're going to use Hyperview, again, the most immersive field of view, 148 degrees, showing everyone what's going on. And it's this final connecting moment. It's that, it's the point where you're in this cinematic experience, but we're showcasing the characters, the protagonist's point of view. Bite mount on, Hyperview in, get those hands in the shot. We want to feel that it's you. We want to feel that person. Thank you guys so much for checking out today's video and joining us for this GoPro cinematic sunrise experience. We hope you learned something and make sure you check out our workshops if you want to learn some more. We're taking you guys on the road to Morocco in September and there's just a few spots left. So, yep, link in there. Top link in the description to check out Skyland Lumina Neo and we'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.